uh, we have a lot of users registering on exchanges, buying Bitcoin. Um, a lot of them take custody of their Bitcoin. They take it out of the exchanges and put it in their wallets. And uh, we have some merchant ad adoption right now because like Lightning software and Lightning wallets are uh, developing and getting more easier and friendlier to the users. And we've seen like an enormous spike to uh, the last uh, few years with Lightning. Well, well, hello, hello. Welcome to the show. Guys, I'm really pleased and really excited to have you back on in this kind of constellation. Uh, how are you guys doing? Arman, uh, just for the record, is my cousin. Zia is, uh, he, Zia is in Iran. And Mohammed, where are you? Are you in Iran? No, I'm a bit there to the down the west part of Germany. I'm living in Kaiserslautern. Oh yeah, exactly. But but you do go sometimes back uh, from time to time to Iran, right? I mean, or or you you never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now no, I I do go back time to time to time. I I have to see my parents. Which part of Germany are you living in? Um, uh, the here in the, what is it called? Rhineland Pfalz near Saarbrücken. Oh okay okay. So in NRW, okay, great. No, NRW is North Rhine Westfalen. This is this is, this is the one below oh, NRW. Okay, one below it. Okay, great. So, um, a bit. Uh, I don't. I know Zia completely, but about you two, I don't know you. So I'm going to start with myself. I'm a software engineer, and it being to space of computer science since I remember. I did my high school also in computers. I, I went to this specialized high school for uh, uh, people who want to study technical stuff. And then basically I started, I, I got uh, introduced to Bitcoin space in 2012, 13, but I really did not do anything and I got really involved in the last three, four years. Mm -hmm. Great. And since then, we're busy with uh, Zia and the others. We we have our own small community of Iranians, and uh, we discuss Bitcoin. Yeah, nonstop for like nonstop. about four years or so. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a good. It's been a good thing. It, it is. It is really lovely. Like you get to, there, there is a rabbit hole, and then you follow, and then there is. Uh, it's a never-ending rabbit hole that just gets more and more interesting. The only problem is it somehow cannibalizes your life. Like, you get completely sucked into it, and then you have to cut other stuff. That's the only bad part about it. Yeah, so that's um that's wonderful um zia so arman arman zia you've been on my show so you know people know you already but but why don't you give just a short background info because I, I mean i do want to you know start off by maybe uh letting zia uh tell us a little bit uh about the background you know the, the sort of a reality check what's going on in iran like uh even you know if you can like you know socially legally geopolitically macroeconomically uh, what is banned? What is allowed? You know, because it of focus. Yeah, on that's Iran. a lot of stuff. But uh, <laughs> let me sum it up. So first, I'm a Bitcoiner from Iran. I live in Iran. I, I live in Tehran, and uh, I produce content about Bitcoin on YouTube. On uh, I have a podcast on on the way, so I'm gonna start it in a week or so. Or so. And uh, I've been contributing to BitcoinD.me. It's like a, uh, it's it's a BitcoinOnly.com web, uh, website style, uh, which is focusing on uh, like Bitcoin resources for uh, uh, here for Farsi speaking people. And we've been translating a lot of stuff in the Bitcoin space for in, into Farsi. And we have a lot of com uh, we have a, a couple of communities and that. I'm particularly active in it's in Twitter and Telegram, different Telegram groups and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, 
let's not talk about me. Let's talk about what's going on in Iran. Uh, like how it's going on in Iran. Uh, we have uh, like l- l- let me start by the legal situation. So since the last couple of times that we talked, uh, nothing. We could say that nothing changed. So uh, mining is, is still uh, mostly uh, like banned and being cracked on by the government. But uh, there are like official ways to do mining with a higher electricity tariff and uh, with some permits and stuff. Uh, so you could do it legally, but uh, it's most of the mining that happens in Iran is actually done by uh, it's it's done unofficially. You, you you don't take a permit for it and stuff like that. You just buy some just you just buy the hardware and put it in a warehouse and do the mining until the government cracked it, cracks down on you. This is the, the situation since 2018. Now uh, it's it has been like this uh, for a long time, and we have like the what do you call it uh, like the summer fud regarding bitcoin consuming the electricity here in iran and uh like uh blackouts in iran being like the bitcoin gets blamed because of the like uh, uh as the main uh, culprit for the blackouts in iran in in the summer and that's all clickbait mainstream media and stuff like that so you know how it is. It's like it's it's a stupid thing. So it's not it's not because of Bitcoin. It's it has like many political and like infrastructure level um, but reasons for why this happens, and it does not have anything to do with Bitcoin actually. Uh, and um, we have this repeating every year. And uh, like the situation with exchanges and people using exchanges here in Iran, it's like it's really flourishing. It's 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 like there's like maybe hundreds of exchanges now. Like we had uh, tens of exchanges like a year or two ago, um, and uh, like we had maybe a handful of exchanges like in the if we go back to like four years ago or five years ago, but now we have a lot of exchanges. Uh, we have a lot of users registering on exchanges, buying Bitcoin. A lot of them take custody of their Bitcoin. They take it out of the exchanges and put it in their wallets. And uh, we have some merchant ad- adoption right now because like Lightning software and Lightning wallets are uh developing and getting more easier and friendlier to the users and we've seen like a like a enormous spike uh, like in contrast to uh the last uh, few years with lightning like uh every year i do an experiment at the at the new at the Persian new year no rules where I tip people, uh, the AD, what we call it, AD. So I tip people for, like, I tell them to give me invoices for Lightning, I'm going to tip you. So in 2018, it was like maybe 10 people. In 2019, maybe 20, 30 people. In 2020 and and, and at the end of 2020 and the start of 2021, which was the last one, uh, the last one, I, I just, I guess I, I myself tipped like 600 people. And there were like other people tipping, and that's only on Twitter. So, and that's only on Twitter and people who follow me, that's uh, who know me. And uh, you could like imagine the situation, like being like this. This is only an analytic, very limit limited view of this. So we have this too here now, and it's very. Uh, I, 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 it's, I've been very optimistic actually about this, and I like how it's go, how it goes with Lightning right now. We have Lightning support in some exchanges, like we don't have Lightning support in most exchanges in in the world, but we just started like some 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 exchanges in Iran just started announced in the few week uh, last weeks that they're gonna start accepting a Bitcoin and Lightning and stuff like that. So. Uh, more and more people are getting into Bitcoin. And uh, that should be the case everywhere in the world because, like, the price goes up, the bull market and stuff like that. 
attract it, it attracts people but it, i guess uh, like based on my judgment on what i see uh, on social media and in in the, in the real world around me it's uh, like the the effect here in iran is much bigger on uh, when we compare it like to other countries like i see like uh, i always i 90% of the time i actually like follow um english communities and like uh i see what they're doing and uh in in the bull market like they they do have more users more people getting attracted to bitcoin more resources are being produced and being read by people but what we have in iran was like like multiple times more than that like uh it's like uh, so like maybe on 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 twitter only tens of thousands of people that's that's much more than any other like communities and other com- countries like i don't see other other places getting this much attention bitcoin getting this much attention maybe like south america maybe i don't know other countries in the middle east could compare to this but not uh, european and american like north american countries So I don't see that happening there, but it's it's in much bigger numbers here in Iran. So that was not sure. If you if you have a, a currency that is inflating as much as what we have in Iran, then you're always in a bull market. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good the one. case actually. Yeah. So you talked about the merchant adoption. I mean, do you have any estimates? I mean, I know it's difficult, but do you think um, could there be done any estimates on merchant adoption rate? Or uh, I have so many questions. I mean, you you just brought up so many things. Like, okay, when people buy on the exchange, first of all, is it like a full KYC or is it KYC light? Or are there other avenues or options people can buy, such as you know, you you can you know now literally buy at stake or vouchers totally anonymously. And 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 redeem it with the with the lightning, uh, you know, URL. Um, and are there any other options to buy Bitcoin for people? Mm, most, like most of most users and most adoption happens at exchanges, and it's more than like it, it's like the majority. So most people use exchanges, and most of them are full KYC. Some of them are light KYC. Some of them let you sell without KYC, and uh, this this is the case uh, most of the time. Uh, but there's uh, there's like other ways of like P two P Telegram groups, like P two P traders who like sell to people who they know. It's not like that they sell to anyone, and uh, like we're seeing stuff like that, and we have like stuff like that, but. Uh, we had local bitcoins in the past, but right now local bitcoin is is, is restricting Iranian, so it's not used that much. Uh, hodl hodl could be used for Iranians. I don't, I, I know, I never, it never got popular in Iran, but it has options. So there's an option. You could use BISC too, but uh, these two are not very popular here. Oh, BISC too. Oh, but, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, BISC is like uh, permissionless. Anyone exactly. Just peer to peer. Yeah. You could just set up Real and mm-hmm. say this is my payment method and so on. Uh huh. I've never seen any liquidity on BISC. Yeah, it's it's, it's a very small. Mm-hmm. Like, very few people use it actually. Okay. Okay. So, Zia, um, w- w- do people uh, consider Bitcoin, although more and more people, uh, Bitcoin is a store of value, or, or do they, are, to what percentage like are people using it as a, for trading, for commerce, for as a medium exchange? I mean, can you So elaborate? it could be said that it's like, it's just like what you see in other parts of the world. It's like uh, the main thing that attracts people and most people and this is like common everywhere that a lot of people want just want to just go invest and trade and stuff like that so you've seen that i guess that's the case in germany and austria and everywhere so most people want to trade so that's why they see bitcoin so it number goes up i like to like 
buy this and then sell it later and stuff. And you could imagine this. But uh, the store of value narrative here is is getting very, very strong uh, in regard to like previous years. I see people considering Bitcoin, like this is not only on social media, in the real world. So they say that I like this because I could just buy it. I, I don't want to buy USD. It's difficult to buy USD right now. Or it's, it's like, I don't know. I, I don't trust like, uh, or I don't have resources to buy USD. I don't know anyone. I could just, so someone could just sell me fake USD here. I mean, USD and cash and paper like that. So I don't want USD. Some of them uh, like still prefer gold, but I, I've seen a lot of people in the real world around me and other places, like when I ask other people that what is their experience with uh, their surroundings of people who buy Bitcoin, they say, uh, like I have my uh, like uncle who bought Bitcoin, they, they want to huddle it for years. <laughs> like they, they say stuff like this and you don't, you don't expect to find someone living in a village in Iran to know about like huddling Bitcoin. Like this is like getting really strong. This this store of value narrative. It's, it's like it's like the case everywhere. But I guess in Iran, it's not very difficult to persuade people that it could act as a store of value because people know, like uh, just as Mohammed said, like real it gets debased all the time. So we know how it feels to lose uh, like our purchasing power. So people know how to store their value. Even if they say that it's like something which, which has like a lot of fluctuations, like Bitcoin, uh, still they 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 see the value of like holding it for, uh, like for a lot of years, and uh, at the same time we have a lot of people who are advocates of using Bitcoin actually, not only hodling it. Because like they say, Bitcoin is the road for, like it, it gives us uh, monetary liberty. It gives us like freedom for interacting with the world. We could use it. We could, that's why they advocate for lightning like all the time. Um, like the, the main focus is here that we can do transactions with the world, but now we can. And we could use this. We could like build something better in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in this geographical location, which is Iran, which is actually uh how do you say it i don't know which is uh, somehow it's it's completely cut off from the rest of the world with regard to like monetary uh liberty with regard to their money so um uh, you guys can jump in anytime i have so many questions like uh which is really important i think to you know to to in uh, you know to put some shed some light on like if I wanted to go to bazaar, like how many people, how many merchants would would accept? Uh, uh, maybe you can talk about you know what kind of wallets people are using. Do they also use samurai, you know, and and just you know and mix it and then you know uh, spend it from the post mix? Uh, can you talk about a little bit about you know how they how people interact? Yeah, I don't know honestly about how many people, but I know for sure that if you ask like a handful of places like if you go to the bazaar and ask like 10 stores uh like if they know what's bitcoin and if they would like to accept it maybe they they're not accepting it as a, as a met payment method as a main payment method or something like that or a suggested payment method it won't be a suggested payment method but if you ask them would you like me to pay you bitcoin for that some of them may be intrigued intrigued and uh they may accept it and i've seen a lot of people do this like they just go to the bazaar and ask like ordinary people on the street that would you like to have bitcoin or maybe i send you bitcoin in like uh, in return for like a service or a product or something there's like the 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 amount of people who say yes is like surprising it's like you would like think that no nobody would care about that but okay it's like mm. most of them are actually interested like to have to because most of them heard about bitcoin like it's bitcoin it's a money it's different than real and uh, they may not know a lot about it but they've heard it on the news they've heard it on social media they've heard it from friends or family 
And uh, some of them may just consider just getting some Bitcoin and just experimenting with it. Like I would go to, I don't know, a repair shop and tell them that repair this for me and they would repair it. And then I ask them to like give them like 10,000 Satoshis of Bitcoin. And uh, since it's not a big number, they would consider, okay, why not? I, I'm in. They would say, and I've seen like people putting videos on YouTube of doing this. And uh, like in 2018, because like because of the bear market and the, the price crash, if you have asked people about this, they would say, hell no, that that coin is that that. Bitcoin thing is like seems very risky and like a lot of people lost money on it but uh, like this is I guess this is Lindy taking effect here like while the time goes on people trust it more and see it more viable like around them they, they consider it as being a viable thing around them and use it and they may be considering it using it all the time but if you want to know more about like merchants who accept it as a method of payment uh, most of them are like online, like online shops and stuff like that. Like uh, the, the other day I just bought, like I was completely surprised. So I was just looking for a net, an Iranian Netflix knockoff. So well, like for pirated content and stuff like that. Believe it or not, we have stuff like, like this here in Iran. Yeah, it's just like Netflix, you click on it. Yeah. So I opened the website. I, wa I wanted to just can see how should I pay for this app application? And I saw that they accept Bitcoin and they accept Lightning too. And I was like, okay, you need something? You click on it and you see you see it right in front of you. And that's that was something that you should you would like uh, expect only if you use like if you want to buy like something like VPNs and stuff like that. But right now it's getting more adopted. You see more donations. You see more people accepting donations at Bitcoin podcasts and stuff like that. Maybe YouTube channels. Uh, I don't know uh, influencers on Twitter or Instagram putting like Bitcoin donation stuff. But links, artists. I've seen a lot of artists who put like Bitcoin donation links, and uh, this is like quite surprising, even for me mm -hmm. that I, I'm I'm like almost always. Uh, spending time about reading about bitcoin like searching about bitcoin i don't know uh talking about bitcoin even for me it's surprising like you see like you just want to buy an account subscription for an app and you see okay here i see they have bitcoin they use coin payments or something so they accept lightning too so you get you you, you get surprised Wow, that sounds very bullish. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let me ask you, um, what about, you know, I had uh, Lord Fuzitua from Tonga. And I mean, I, I didn't know those numbers. I didn't know that, uh, what is it, like global remittances is like in the amount of 700, 800 billion or something like that in that range. And and just in Tonga, it makes up like 40% of GDP or in El Salvador, I don't know, you know, don't, don't, you know, count me on the numbers, but it's like 25, 30%. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just mind boggling. So do you yeah, know the numbers Tonga in Iran? Very... Yeah. No, no. Okay, but but there are I mean, there are people, know. right? We never know official numbers in Iran. Numbers <laughs> are banned here. <laughs> they don't like numbers. Okay, but there are, but there are a lot of people, I guess, you know, who who are sending their, you know, the families from abroad, you know, they're like, you know, yeah. all the Iranian diaspora yeah. from everywhere. <laughs> uh, um, you know, I'm sure they're sending. Now they have the option, you know, to. to I mean, this is permissionless, you know, it's censorship resistance. Yeah, I, last night I was just helping some some guy, actually, he was from my, like, he, he found me because they, he, 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 like, he, he actually had the courage to, I don't know, send me a direct message, he just told me like this, because uh, uh, he saw that uh, he's from my hometown, from my birthplace, so he, well, he, he felt, like, very close to me, so... And he told me that I, I just want to send money back home. And I, I live in, where was it? Germany? I don't know. I don't remember where he lived. And he just wanted uh, to see how Lightning works because he saw that earning exchanges are accepting Lightning. And he, he now 
he, he now could carry on doing remittances with lower fees because he was doing it. But now he wants to like upgrade and use Lightning from now on. And uh, he just sort of, I, I helped him set up a Phoenix wallet and he started using it. And it's trustless. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I I do have a question. If uh, there, there is always, and it's always in my mind as well, like there's always that how good is the adoption going on or what's mm -hmm. the adoption number? Is there any methodology or anything that you could, like, could systematically follow and say like, I don't know, go to 10 shop and then out of these 10 shop, how many accept Bitcoin as a pay payment or how many of them are interested or something like that? Have anyone ever done something like that? So we could I've, maybe try that as well. I've never saw such a thing uh, and I wouldn't like to participate in such a thing. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it, it seems like a, a lot of work and a lot of effort. So that's not something uh, out of my skills. I don't have the skills for that. But we could like theorize about it and how we could just like collect such numbers and data. I don't know. It's my experience is mostly like my like what I what I feel about this the the, the space. What I say about it is it comes from experience, from interactions and. Uh, and I, I don't actually uh, engulf myself in in a, in a Bitcoin in 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 only Bitcoiners and Bitcoin community space. While although I'm very active, but I report to the community space because I I have a lot of followers now. I, I didn't have this much followers in like in a year, or so, you know, like in the previous year or so. And uh, I've seen a lot of people from different backgrounds, from different places, from different like professions, from with different mindsets and with different political views, and from everything. Like uh, like some some of them, like is like I've seen even these like what what do you call them? Ads on yeah, Twitter. Okay. You know what I mean? Like the the people in support of the regime. And even those contact about like how to use Bitcoin and stuff like that. They get them. They get an instant block, but whatever so i i like i've seen like what i see and all these backgrounds and like i always ask them a lot of questions actually and i'm very interested in the background and what they do and how they got to know and who introduced them and how, how what was their experience and i asked them to talk about their experiences actually if they had a good experience to talk share with your friends and so they could know uh, they have this method. Don't keep it to yourself. Just spread yeah. it. Spread the spread the word to people surrounding you. And uh, to, like, I don't I don't see only Bitcoiners. I don't see only crypto people. I don't see only crypto traders because, like, my content is not about trading and stuff like that. I'm only technical and like inst instructional and educational. And I don't get traders actually. They don't come to me. They know that I I, I don't know anything about their, what they about their profession. So I see normal people actually come to me and from all the backgrounds, from anything you could imagine. Like some of them actually surprise you a lot. Like you consider this: you're following somebody because like he's a very good doctor. He talks about like medicine. And about like the doctor industry, whatever you call it. So he talks about it, and you, you like their content. You're following them, and one day, like you see that uh, he tweets that, uh, uh, like I, I always send money to our home to my mother and father, and uh, like he lives in France, and he sends money back home to Iran, and. Uh, you like this people, this person, and you're not like focusing on his content because of Bitcoin. And then you ask them how you do that because you want to help him like learn about Bitcoin. You see an opportunity to like interact with him. And he says, I'm, I'm using Bitcoin to send money back home. And you, you're like, wow, <laughs> okay, okay. <That's> <laughs> he, he just, wow, fantastic. like, yeah, he, he was much faster than me in doing that. He he learned about himself and he did it and he didn't need anything. What what kind of that's, wallets are people using? That surprise you. 
uh, Zia, what kind of wallets? Well, are I mean, is it possible to download and install every kind of wallet? Would it be Blue Wallet, yeah. Phoenix, a Breeze, yeah. Wallet Satoshi? Anything other than than anything other than exchange related wallets which require KYC and stuff like that. So, okay. if you want to, to like install coin, so custodial wallets like where they are not actual wallets, custodial accounts exchanges like coinbase crack and stuff like that you can't install them here like you can install them they won't give you access which is a but, good thing yeah actually i i like it being there like that because i don't want people to keep their money on like Custodian. the exchanges and yes especially exchanges from those parts of the world which ban and freeze money from people so a lot of people use binance not as a wallet, as an exchange, because it's still not limiting. Like it is limiting and it, is, it limits some, it does not limit some. There's a lot of tricks that people use it here. Uh, some people use that, but not as wallets. But most wallets that are used here are, I would see, I would say that just like what uh, Google and the internet actually suggests to you, it's mostly like, let's say, uh, Trust wallet. Uh, I don't know what was that shitty wallet everyone uses. Blockchain.com, blockchain.info was in, back in the days. So, uh, like wallets like this are very popular. And since it gets with the word of the mouth, mm -hmm. people like recommend it to others. But uh, like installing Bitcoin only wallets, like Blue Wallet, Samurai wallets like that, uh, Electrum, and uh, so they, they, have, they have seen an uptick. Because a lot of people now understand that it's not only about the number of coins, it's about the features, it's about the security, it's about being open source. So we have an uptick in that. And actually, uh, the Samurai team just told me about that. So like they, they sent, sent me actually a screenshot of their Google downloads from Iran mm -hmm. and uh, the Google Play downloads. And uh, they, they like Blue Wallet said that they had like, I don't know, 70, 80% more downloads from Iran, really? actually. Uh, <laughs> and we are producing content about that. So uh -huh. like, not only me, there's uh, other people. Actually, Mohammed also produced yeah. some content about like Blue Wallet, about Lightning, about stuff like that. So, great. so uh, we, we are seeing an uptick in, in good wallets being used. It's not only limited to mostly coin shitty wallets with, with no features mm -hmm. and not open source wallets and you could buy actually hardware wallets too here Ledger, any kind Trezor, any kind of hardware wallet like Big like uh, even Big, uh, yeah, even got a cold card too so you really the best one. cold yeah, card which i love it yeah. <laughs> very extinct here but yeah <laughs> it's, it's, the it's most it paranoid one. <laughs> i have it there i can't reach it right now mm -hmm. yeah even cold card i i found one and bought it mm -hmm. so it's not like that they are very like uh, popular here, but Ledger and Trezor are very, very popular here. Of course, like, yeah. yeah. Most people just go and buy it's Ledger. Very user yeah. friendly, yeah. Yeah. I, I have a question, yeah. I guess we, we talked about it some time ago briefly because I, I'm really a big proponent of like doing DCA and not getting distraction of the, the price all the the shit coins and stuff you know yeah because it really distracts you if you because you we we talked about the merchants accepting but let's talk about the people who earn fiat you know and this is about dca into bitcoin for a long time because that's that's all, all it's it's about but i don't see still such a platform or do you do you see any need any urge for the people to have such a thing and how can it how can we accomplish that yeah so about dca we don't have exchanges or sellers with such a, such a feature so you need to do it manually and one limitation is that we don't have actually automatic payments in iran like most people use online payments online banking and like whenever they want to buy bitcoin because you can't like transfer a lot of money like a lot of cash money like if you want to buy a car like in cash like you need like money maybe like this the size of this table this much money here so that's a lot of money you can't carry this with you so 
because of like the, the bank, the, 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 what do you call it? The cash, the money notes are worthless here. So you need a lot of them. And uh, most people use online banking, online payments and stuff like that. So whenever they want to buy Bitcoin, um, yeah, they, they, they just transfer from their banks to their exchange account and then just buy there. Yeah. And this system of online banking in Iran doesn't have automatic payments, just like like other places in the in the world. Uh, I, I guess it's, it's 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 usual to it's it's a common thing that you use yeah. like automatic payments and yeah we do yeah. have it. So we don't have stuff like that for DTing. I think people could do it manually. Just go they go and buy every week or maybe um, do um, it like that. Well, what do you mean by automated pay- payments? You mean automated payment as in someone sets an automatic uh, automated pay- payment every month or something? Or there is also something here in Germany that basically you sign something to someone, like I let you do to take money from my account every month or something. Which one do you mean by automated? So the payment? thing is that uh, is, uh, you've seen how like Visa, Master, and yeah, you could just enter them into your card numbers and like online services and like maybe let's say spotify account it it it, it renews every month and they they take the money from your visa okay. and master and uh, you, you don't need to tell them yeah to, but armor but armor meant so DCA I mean, uh, somehow did, he meant auto yeah. dca like accumulating bitcoin on a regular basis that's what you mean right yeah I mean, yeah I've, I've yeah so what one of the limitations is that we don't have such a f- feature with regard to online banking. So we, we could do this. You need to like hold your money in, in your exchange account. So you don't want to do that. You want your money in your pocket. And whenever you want to buy Bitcoin, you send it there. And that makes it a, a bit of a hassle to do, do it like this. But the thing is that a lot of people do that. Actually, a lot of people learn their lessons from trading. And uh, like in every bull market, we have a lot of people who learn the value of DCA and hodling and not trading, specifically not trading shit coins. So whenever this happens, like people, uh, like we have a bigger number of people who learn how, like learn about DCA and stuff like that. And uh, so this is about DCA, but uh, if we if we see what DCA men, means to accomplish, it means to accomplish a system for people who to, for, for people to learn to huddle. But a lot of people know that they like huddling is a very good way here. So because like the effect of uh, money debasement here in Iran, so that's why uh, like. They know how to huddle. They buy, they huddle. <laughs> so they don't trade their Bitcoins. It's, it's not like that. They, they, so a lot of them buy the dip, actually. So they know how, to, they know that this is a dip. I could use this. So they do that too. Uh, so the, the DCA feature, if, if something like that get, gets add, added to exchanges, I would, conf- I would, think that uh it would have like a good number of users there's like there, there would be a lot of people who so i've seen actually it so this is this is something worth uh, worthy of mention i've seen people on twitter starting something some kind something like a a very small movement but it may get bigger that they don't uh, register with like government but I don't know what you call them, insurance company here in Iran, and they they have started buying their uh, buying Bitcoin instead of paying for insurance, and uh, uh, they they started doing this, and uh, they they all, most of them have threads. They started doing this like for a year now or something, and every month they keep uh, people updated that I. I bought this uh, like uh, $40 worth of Bitcoin this month instead of paying to, I don't know, government sponsored or government, I don't know, control insurance companies. It's called Tammy Nishtamai here. (laughs) So yeah, uh, yeah, people 
so I, I like this. It's it's very interesting that yeah. people are starting doing this like instead of so they insure them they, they put them their insurance money into Bitcoin instead of like this shitty insurance from government which does nothing actually. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so see so yeah, uh, because um, Mohammed asked you know actually a very good question the adoption rate and you know whether there are any uh, number statistics or um, I mean when you look at El Salvador by the way I mean do people have people heard I mean I guess you know a lot of people heard in Iran that El Salvador you know has yeah. uh, <laughs> has declared uh, Bitcoin as legal tender. I mean, what's the reaction of Iranians? I mean, wouldn't aren't they saying like, "Hey, let's do this too," or or let's let's declare it legal tender? What, what's what's the reaction? Is there any kind of reaction? Yeah, the Bitcoin proponents and the crypto lovers here would love to see this, and like there was a lot of cheering in the space. Like I I said that El Salvador started like accepting Bitcoin as legal tender. There was like an instant five hundred likes on Twitter. So. It's like, and you know how Twitter works. It's 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 different from like Instagram or other platforms. It's like you need like uh, uh, you need very uh, attentive followers to read and like interact and engage with the topic. So it was like a lot of people consider this okay. That's good news. I, actually, I wrote it in Farsi, so it was not like from English communities and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it was like a lot of people talking about a lot of cool move. We're like, we're behind our government people. Our government people are very stupid. Like these, these were some of the things that people saying that the government, our government people are very stupid. They should like consider something like this. But a lot of people know that the government wouldn't like such a thing. So they don't like the money to be so it's 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 an oppressive regime here i don't know and because they would lose control Salvador right is. i mean they have everything to yeah. lose the re iranian regime the ayatollahs who have confiscated all the you know seized every asset that you can think of i mean uh you know i mean i can talk openly i know it's easy i'm you know i'm not in iran so is yeah i you know I'm, i get that so uh, um is it just yeah. uh, i what? i wanted to add a thing yeah. point here uh the, there is a there, there are the Bitcoin lovers like us who think it, it's super cool that El Salvador does this and then there is the normal economical elites that are prominent in economy as in normal uh, normal economy not Austrian not, not Austrian and they do despise this and they follow up with always with this that uh, it would bring up this the same problems as dollarization, uh, and which is a whole other story. And I really don't understand it. Basically, like if your money is bad and then uh, defaulting to dollar, why it should be bad? But I but I'm not an why it should, but it should be bad. But I'm not an economist, so I have no idea. The thing is that I know that uh, the economy uh, the economist uh, the people who are engaging with this topic and the, the people who are engaging with this topic in uh, in a clubhouse i have seen them basically bashing this move and i don't see it even if the regime said it's okay like it like be okay about it to get some consultation from uh, economy, economy elite economists i don't think they would get uh, it into a into an agreement that this is a good thing. I, I here you you don't have just one problem. There are two problems. There is the the regime with that believes in the, the whole concept of everyone wants to uh, basically I don't know if I can use the F word F with us, and everyone is trying to basically overthrow the government and everything. And then there is the second part is. The economists who are at the end are the last resort of these people, and they completely f up everything, and they don't know what they're doing. Basically, like morons going around and saying, "Okay, now we have a uh, f up economy. Let's ask someone who knows his thing." Then they ask the the, the economists that are uh, completely against this uh, this topic, and they they would basically 
follow the normal, uh, I, I think it's the Sh Chicago School of Thought, which basically like let's control everything through cover through uh, expansion and uh, basically through mon monetary policies. And when they when you go there, you realize if you cannot have monetary policy if you don't have a one forced money. If there is a way for people to go out, your monetary policy would be basically voided because people will get out of your monetary policy if they don't like it. So I don't see it coming. Uh, top down, like I mean, top down by top down. I mean, like like something like happened in El Salvador that someone, the government or the or the parliament or someone says, okay, from now on, this is a valid uh, payment method in our country and let, let's uh, honor it. I don't see it. It, it would not happen uh, anytime soon. Yeah, I agree. Actually, I don't. I don't think that the Iranian government likes to lose power on anything. Mm -hmm. So it's not only this, we don't see them letting loose of anything. Mm -hmm. So it's like even some established uh, industries, some established e ecosystems like, I don't know, startups and fintech startups, which they could control and monitor very heavily through their, uh, I don't know, central bank system and yeah, uh, agencies like that. I don't know government agencies uh even with regard to such ecosystems they don't let looks of them they 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 are actually limiting them every day more and more and more so like i've i've been watching this fintech space in in, in iran it's like a total uh, i mean it's like i don't know why they keep working actually the people in the fint fintech space like they they get banned from something every day they get like filtered and blocked and their websites and they get, some of them are like say, some of them get handcuffed and <laughs> they take them to the police like uh, on, 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 a, on a on a let's say maybe monthly basis because like the the uh, jurisdictional system here in iran doesn't understand anything about like fintech and about like how uh, a fintech startup could like maybe receive fraud money, money fraud money from someone who tries to maybe somehow use that money in this plat platform but like that startup could actually block it the startup could self-regulate itself they don't understand this if money goes to your account you should go to the courts i i've seen people like in in 2014 13 they they got like literally they got handcuffed and taken away and like they they, they were like out of i don't know uh, out of that situation like in a few days but like they don't understand anything about it and even if they understand they don't want to let loose of it so even stuff like they could control very efficiently even that spaces those spaces those ecosystems those like places they don't they don't let loose of that too they mm -hmm. don't like technology they don't like innovation they certainly don't like liberty liberties so we could imagine that this won't happen anytime yeah. soon we talked about this so many times you know Zia, i mean demographically speaking there's so many young people in iran and i mean my question i'm just asking myself or you know into this discussion we're throwing it out uh I mean, what, what needs to happen? What kind of conditions needs to, you know, be fulfilled or uh, what kind of circumstance needs to be in place to, you know, what, what's the pain point so that people, because it, it's already here, you know, it's, it's the cat is out of the bag and uh, people just need to use it, right? I mean, there is, there is no real, uh, there is no other technological possibility to censor uh, Bitcoin transactions, right? Or, or or to you know stop people from installing things or um you know uh, and when i um, so, yeah I, I know what you mean and that's a very good question unfortunately i don't have an answer for that but i could give you an example just a week just in this week like a few days ago uh even the internet they are controlling it more they want to try to censor it block it stop it 
limited more. And they just, uh, I don't know what you voted on some law. I don't know what it's called in, in English. It has a very lengthy name, which limits the use. It's, it's basically the uh, infrastructure. It's basically the first, uh, not the first, but the, the next steps for becoming uh, China, the Great Firewall situation. So even the internet, it's been around for decades now. It's been used, it's being used by millions here in Iran. It's something very neutral. It's something everyone has access to. And it's something that like uh, you could not imagine like uh, a country going against the internet. It's like fighting the sea. It's like fighting something <laughs> you so cannot so actually bizarre. fight it's bizarre but even even yeah. that mm. and the new regulations coming mm -hmm. for that we're going to become china with regard to firewalls mm -hmm. <laughs> the great firewall so would that would that make diff would it make it difficult for people to because that was my question before like how many people do you think are running their own nodes is does it make it more difficult to run your own node yeah now? definitely it's going to make it difficult to do anything in the internet actually <laughs> okay other yeah, than yeah. using yeah this is really a big issue like uh, they can and they have done several times they have closed uh, all the uh, like ports that basically they see that it should be closed there was a time that they closed https protocol yeah so. basically they they completely blocked any package that was going through https you you cannot like how that could like uh, as a computer scientist like that is unfathomable for me like if i if i think of it it's like yeah. telling everyone in the country okay from now on because we cannot uh, get into people's houses that we don't like. Everyone is not allowed to have a lock and key, and everyone has to have their own doors open. It was Jesus. as stupid as that, and they did it. Like HTTPS blocking, they did it. They blocked Google, so it's not something that they cannot or will not do it, uh, or we, we can uh, somehow uh, discuss that if they will do it or not. The point that they, they they feel the need for it, they will do it, and now it's re legally they can do it, mm. and it's going to be. I think it's not going to be easy. At it, I thought uh, there will be times that it would not be for easy for uh, Bitcoin nodes and Bitcoin miners to connect yeah. to the main net. There would be problems. Yeah, there would maybe be not today, maybe not tomorrow, but uh, there would be days. What, uh, Mohammed, yeah, there would so, be workarounds. There would be mm -hmm. ways to circumvent that. Yeah, but it's not going to be for all the people. Yeah, it's not going to be very easy for most people. And, yeah, it's not going to be for the beginners, for the amateurs. Mm -hmm. It's going to exactly. be for the tech savvy only. Yeah, for it's going to be advanced. So, what about tour? Costly. Can people can yeah. people tour uh, use tour? No, 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 no. Not not even now. It's the uh, tour doesn't work in Iran. So I could just take, okay, this way, my phone there and show you if Tor connects or not. It does not connect. You need to set up a VPN first and then connect Tor. Like it gets like the new bridges and stuff like that. And then disconnect your VPN and now your Tor works. And sometimes if you disconnect your VPN, Tor stops too. So no, Tor does not work in Iran. And it won't work in the future. The the thing is, if it's working now, it's out of mercy. Like, let's put it this way. Like, they let you use it. If they want, they can stop it. And they will. And they, like, there was a time, like, they completely shut down the whole internet. Like, yeah. Not, yeah, it was like, I'm not, I'm not it, even... like few, two weeks ago. <laughs> Again, they, they shut reason? down uh, the whole... The, whole internet for a province in Iran, Khuzestan. Okay. So because there were protests. Uh, oh, yeah, because of water. Yeah. Uh, so sure. they, yeah. They, they, it's becoming something normal. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's they're normalizing it, actually. OK, they even this have is... like people on social media. To normalize this is a huge so. problem. Yeah. I mean, if they can cut off the infrastructure, yeah. I mean, this is this is 
this is mind boggling. Uh, th- 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 this is the thing that uh, uh, people who go against Bitcoin start with it normally. And then normally people say there would never be a government that's stupid. Well, <laughs> here we are. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Here's yeah. our stupid government to you. Yeah. Like, like the 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 thing the thing is we have to I, even as a big Bitcoin maximalist I consider myself a big Bitcoin maximalist. As a Bitcoin maximalist, I admit that this is an attack vector which, if attacked, normal people cannot go through it. Yeah, you could have tech savvies who somehow managed to make their own radio network communication yeah. <laughs> through telescopic uh, telescopic uh, antennas, but uh, you cannot expect normal people to do that. Uh, so the, the, if there is one of the valid arguments against the, if Bitcoin completely can be always without a problem decentralized, uh, well, I could say no, and here is a limit. There are limits, this is one. It's still better than everything else. As Bitcoin maximalist, I have to say that. It's better than everything else, but there are limits, and this is the limit. Yeah, but don't have... you see, the, uh, like in the long term, exactly like going back to the initial topic, the KYC and the exchanges, that doesn't it somehow get into, like the, the, the normal people get into problems because, because they can censor all those people? If you if you have bought some Bitcoin and through KYC they uh, they clearly know who you are where you are, and uh, yeah, it, it can be somehow risky. I I heard in, in what I, I'm not sure if it's in this draft of the law or not, but I have heard that well, some of them were pushing for KYC for using the internet. So you 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 are not talking with people who are normal. And of course, yes, they they can censor and they they can like if if you if you KYC and you have your uh, bitcoins uh, being uh, purchased from a bank, of course they can uh, basically come come for you. But the thing is, the problem with Bitcoin is you cannot control it. You either completely shut it off or not, and that's the uh, it's a it's a good thing about it. If you don't shut it up, it's like a, it's this, it's basically cryptography. You you cannot say, okay, there is cryptography, then I can control. No, you either completely shut it off and say no one is allowed to use it and basically go against everyone who's using cryptography or basically Bitcoin, uh, or you you completely let it go. Uh, like even if people are KYCing, okay, as soon as you have the, your Bitcoins out of your bank, your exchange into your your own wallet then you're uh, you're off the radar there is no way for them to like uh, come and take it from you. you can always say okay i lost it i was stupid or whatever it's not there anymore i lost my keyboard my uh, 12 uh, passphrases and everything uh, the Excellent. problem is <laughs> yeah the, yeah the problem is you uh, you always have come with this pre- uh, assumption uh, and assuming that, uh, okay, there would not be in, uh, someone who is that stupid that cut it completely off. But here you are. It could be. I think uh, we, we can still go uh, with it completely that they cannot c- cut everything off because you cannot not have cryptography in, uh, in the current world. And if they want to have cryptography and there is even one connection to outside world, then there would be a way for it to, to, to connect to the normal world. And that's basically either cut it off or not. The problem only is inconvenience. If you cannot conveniently rely on that, you have a connection to the outside mm-hmm. world all the time, then you, can, you cannot base a money on top of it. Basically, Bitcoin is the money on top of the internet. You need yeah. that. Well, that's a nature. Yeah, it's going to be inconvenient. Definitely, yeah. it's going to be inconvenient. But it's not going to be. Uh, it's like they would like uh, sh- uh, shut it down or cut it off one hundred percent here in, in the. Like, they won't shut down email, right? No, they can't do that. You could and, send. You know, people would would actually. Actually, they, they can do it, but. I mean. 
<laughs> okay, protest. we we have had very very much worse stuff. Okay, like uh, cut cut off here, and there were protests, but mm. okay, it's it's a very oppressive regime. Yeah. They have a lot of power, so. <laughs> so but uh, the thing is, uh, so I would say that they won't understand the how much effect it would have, like how difficult it would be to close all the ways of using Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. It's like you could just send your transaction via email to an email server anywhere. They won't understand that you could use email for that too, because they don't consider email as a as a threat. They won't uh, cut off like SMS. I, I remember Samurai Wallet had an SMS server for relaying tra transactions. I don't know if it's working right now, but it was in the back in the day. So if we need such a method, there would be such a thing. Maybe yeah. I could ask Samurai guys to do something like that again. Yeah. Or they won't like. Let's say they 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 can't like they can't cut off everything just as what Muhammad said like they need encryption even themselves need it so the, yeah the, the thing is if you're talking about adoption yeah and adoption you, you, that's the, gonna the, not then uh, if you're talking about adoption them. you need convenience and basically if they want they can bother people out of using it like bother them so much that mm -hmm. they would stop using it mm -hmm. the, uh, the same thing happened for example uh okay there are two uh, one thing uh, if there is no alternative then uh, people may try to uh, and people really want to use it they may try to find it like for the store of value i i still see it as a possibility that people will use it as a store of value even if they, it's completely shut off like if i could buy let's say half a bitcoin if i have that much money ever uh, if I could buy a half a Bitcoin and I want to uh, use it as a store of value, I I could go to someone who is relaying through SMS and to buy stuff mm -hmm. there. But if you're talking about adoption as a method of payment, there you need lightning and lightning. You, for lightning, you need convenient, properly reliable internet all the time. Yeah, exactly. You cannot have... A, lightning and then have uh, internet breaking because basically it could be used against you you, you know there are, it's the it's lightning uh -huh. network and someone can basically claim your your money if you don't cannot uh, go through uh, transactions mm -hmm. yeah i think people are working on it and, and by the way mohammed i mean uh, i'm not sure how it works exactly but you know there's this block stream satellite kit that has also been sent out to Lord Fusitua, you know, in Tonga and to, you know, some guys in El Salvador, Venezuela, and they are testing it, setting it up. I think one of them, uh, Alexandro Cesare, you know, El Sultan Bitcoin, I think he's, he's called on Twitter. Uh, we had him on, you know, on our talks. So could that be like, you know, used, uh, you know, potentially to, to circumvent all these restrictions or, you know, internet uh, jamming? Satellite. What? Right, satellites that light like inter internet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they have like a kit. Like for, for for receiving for receiving like the Bitcoin node, that's a good way. So mm -hmm. you could just relay with SMS and check your node mm -hmm. or check nodes or something like that. So for receiving is it's not bad. It's actually Blockstream is it, it broadcasts the whole uh, the broadcast, the blo yeah, Bitcoin yeah. blockchain to the yeah. Word, yeah, but for using an internet satellite, like as uh, as the main multi-homing option for your internet, that's not going to be an easy thing. I, I haven't studied this topic that more that much, but I've seen a lot of people very being very pessimistic about it, being very pessimistic about like uh, uh, if they ever give service to Iran Iranians, like the the. What was it? It was Elon Musk's project, Starlink, or something like mm -hmm. that. So, if they ever give uh, service to Iranians, if they ever, uh, if ever, if if the government would be like able to jam it or something, or if if it gets criminalized, if it gets 
like uh, recognize as a criminalized act and if that happens actually it's going to be a very serious problem yeah. people will have a lot of problems I, with that because it's not going to be a very cheap and yeah. simple solution that all people would adopt so if everybody adopts it then you can stop the people yeah but if only some people adopt it that's going to be a very bad problem for those people who use it if it gets uh, criminalized or something like that so and we never had a test actually in iran I, i've never seen any test results if it works would be interesting iran, maybe they can send you a yet. kit uh zia i think you know uh, if you know if, yeah. if 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 you can somehow I, I receive the package I definitely won't accept that <laughs> well there are two mm. two things uh f- first of all because i have not ever checked it does block stream satellite do block stream satellites uh support uplink or it's just broadcasting they support uplink i guess through iridium and you need to buy stuff for that like mm. iridium modem or something like that it's receiver it's very expensive and the subscription is very expensive it's not very expensive but it's very slow it's like i don't know 100 kilobits or something like that it's good for bitcoin transactions it's not enough for anything else yeah other than well that. if you want to do bitcoin transaction why you would want to do anything else the, the, the my question is so you in theory you could have a in the a kit that just connects to uh web block stream satellites and basically can do bitcoin transactions yeah that's, that's it correct assumption yeah. or not uh, yeah the, the thing is that they say i've seen a lot of people say this different in different places that this is detectable and you're gonna get in a lot of trouble but i don't know anything about it actually yeah, i mean so i'm not a techie i'm not I sure whether you can that circumvent warning, that problem like yeah 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 so i've seen a lot of people talking about it being detectable so actually there's this thing that even walkie talkies in iran are very prohibited mm-hmm. tools so and uh, when you consider i've seen that a lot of people say that they detected us using walkie talkies and they like uh find us uh like they had to like they they had to pay some compensation for using it or maybe jail time or anything for that so uh, if i when i see that they've did that to that kind of technology which is detectable if you have like sending mm. uh i would consider that they would do it for others too yeah so why not it's really mind-boggling the the degree of censorship oppression and surveillance and <laughs> It's it's mind-boggling, and I think you know at the end of the day, as Eric Voskel and many other you know would say, even Giacomo Zucco, you know, it's like at the end of the day, you know, Bitcoin has been and is it will always be the black market money. <laughs> so you know, people, you know, either people are going to rise up and you know wake up out of their you know uh, matrix and 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 just start using it and without asking permission because the pain point has by then you know reached uh, you know momentum. Uh, or we can just, you know, consider it as a fair yeah, experiment. Yeah, this is actually <laughs> the thing that I think, like, I've, I've, like, there's a lot of people who talk about, like, blockchain and crypto in this space that they don't like what I say. They don't like my opinions. And because I'm a bit, like, what would you call it? Um, harsh on this. <laughs> so I, I, I don't, like beat her around the bushes i, I talk very uh, very explicitly about what i think and uh i've 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 said this before like in different kind of meetings and meetups and twitter and all that that bitcoin doesn't seem to want to be uh like like in in the middle like meeting the meet, meet at the, in the middle solution or something like that so it doesn't do regulation very good. Either you accept it in your regulator framework or it you just can't stop it. And uh, it's not made for being getting regulated. It's not like that you could regulate it on chain or anything. If you want to stop people from transacting, you can't do that. So 
it, and, 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 and it powers and it gives potential to people to use it for anything that you may not like. So don't try to like fight it. And they don't like this. They say that the regulators don't think like this. I say, Bitcoin doesn't care about what the regulators think because Bitcoin does not think. Bitcoin just works, just operates. It's you that you should just adapt yourself to what Bitcoin is and how it works. You can't do anything about that. And uh, this is the the main feature that, that that's mm-hmm. why Eric Vosquil and Zach talk about like Bitcoin being the black market money because if mm. we take it to the extreme point of what it could lead to it could lead to that yeah it could lead to oh they call it black market it's a free market kind exactly. of situation it, yeah it, will it will it create a space of free market mm-hmm. or black market i don't know mm-hmm. that's not actually possible to predict uh, because Bitcoin doesn't create actually anything. You use it to create something. But does it have the potential? Yes, it does have the potential. So it will, it will be used. It's going to be used. And you, it's, it's like if, if you take it to that extreme where uh, you need to use money as a tool to fight, uh, it's going to be there for you. Yeah. You can't stop that with regulators and politicians yeah. and influencers sucking up to politicians and yeah. <laughs> something yeah. like that. There's no you can't do it with it's negotiations. Not, yeah. In their in their defense, Arizia, I think we have to consider this uh, this one as well. There is the time the time factor there. There is a time that they they see as they could talk with the regulator and prevent a, a pointless fight that we're going to win anyway, mm-hmm. like the Bitcoin is going to win anyway, but there would be a fight and that would be an inconvenience. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there are people who, who think, and I, I cannot 100% agree or disagree with them because it's a, it's a, it's a very gray area on like if you can really convince people on helping with Bitcoin or not or even if it's a good idea or not. But the thing is, there, there are friends of ours, both of us, uh, who think that if you do the negotiation before starting the fight, you may be able to avoid the fight and basically the inconvenience the fight. Mm-hmm. The thing is, we, we don't live that much. We'll just live like, I don't know, 70 years. We already passed like 30 years of, uh, of it, uh, each of us min- minimum. So the thing it's is, the there's only 40 years left. And, the oldest and, and you don't... <laughs> and, and you don't want to live in the time where there is fight, yeah. uh, uh, even though if you win. Yeah, I know. That's the, but their, it's, their it's, mindset. So the thing is that uh, that's good for uh, Chervinsky but, style, you know, but Jake pointless Chervinsky on Twitter. Yeah. The thing is that they do need to fight the advocates too. So I won't consider them as trying to help. I consider them as mostly bootlickers. Mm-hmm. They just want to. Yeah. Yeah. So they they, they, they like the power. They like to like yeah. worship that. Uh, yeah. You you have uh, I totally agree on uh, this that they like to worship power, and it's it's a mentality that comes to a like is forced to everyone's head in a totalitarian regime. It's not easy to, to break out of that mentality. I am still out of, I don't know how many years I've, I'm here. Uh, I'm, a, I'm still trying to break out of this mentality of being a peasant, but it's not easy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a form of conditioning. I think we all, we all have been going through. You know, it's, I think it's literally this matrix that people have been conditioned to. So, you know, and to be fair, to be clarified, I mean, I didn't mean, you know, that oppression, coercion, censorship, surveillance. I mean, the degree of censorship is everywhere. I mean, look at, you know, whether we're talking about, uh, you know, content you're putting out or talking or, you know, experts talking, you know, giving out truth or facts. 
uh, would it be, you know, the whole vaccination madness and, and, and COVID and whatsoever. I mean, it just, it just, uh, it just in Iran, it's just very, you know, so obvious. It's so extreme, you know, but, but uh, to be honest, I mean, it's globally, we've reached a tipping point and, and I'm not sure which, which direction we're going, but I'm, to be honest, as a parent, as a father of a seven month year old baby girl, I'm, I'm pretty concerned with what's going on. So, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm still after, you know, at the end of the day, I'm su super optimistic. You know, I, I know, uh, you know, it, it just needs a really crit a little, a small critical mass of people with it be three, four, five percent uh, of whatever a nation state or, or, uh, you know, or the, t or the total planet to, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, to make this happen. I I do have a political question that I'm going to throw it at uh, Zia because because he is in Iran and if he doesn't like to answer it then we will just ignore this topic and then go to the next one. Is uh, how much do you see? Go is, is the potential for Bitcoin is getting really politicized in Iran, as in the the like high level polit pol policy. Like someone says, if if you're supporting me, use Bitcoin. If you're against this one or against that one, then accept Bitcoin. And then that is starting a mass yeah. movement. Do you think is that a possible thing happening? No, no uh, not at all. Okay, because like. Politicians here in Iran are not like, you know what I mean. <laughs> so it's not like they. I'm talking they, about opposition, uh, not the politicians in Iran. Oh, okay, that could be maybe, but like a politician living in Iran trying to no, have no, an effect no, no. or have something is so, or a place in Iran, they 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 work in different ways <laughs> they no, just no that, there there is no way that you yeah, destroy in the that way, chair that you yeah in that way i i could uh, see it maybe happening because like what was um the, the guy the russian guy that have the putin uh, no no uh, alexei navalny Navalny. Uh, yeah yeah he 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 was accepting actually the nations in bitcoin and like like there were, there was quite a few money sent to him in Bitcoin, actually, and you could read uh, Alex Gladstein's piece on why Bitcoin matters for freedom, <clears throat> and uh, he talks uh, like how when he like uh, the, not only on his uh, friends, his his like colleagues, or any, I don't know, his followers were were when they got like debanked and demonetized their, their accounts were limited and stuff uh they started accepting bitcoin and they accepted like hundreds of thousands of actually dollars the equivalent of bitcoin i guess eight hundred thousand dollars or something like that or three hundred thousand dollars and that was in a very short amount of time in a very short period of time and uh if that happens for such a person, I could like see it happening for other people. Uh, what what I'm proposing is not exactly accepting uh, money here. I'm talking about uh, money as a concept is a social consensus. So that means everyone, everyone on the on a on a country or in the world are 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 having an acceptance on on an estate to say, this is the current state. And then let's say if someone wants to use this as a method of providing a consensus, let's say, say if you, let, let's say I am a, a leader and I, I just say this, if you like me, start accepting Bitcoin as a method of payment, not sending me money, start, start accepting it. So then there would be a way that people would see other people who have the same thought, thought and the flow of thought without really having a voting going I on. guess uh, there's something interesting for k to know about this is that uh, the main thing with Bitcoin proponents and Bitcoin su supporters is that they are uh, like seeing it as a fight like 
they 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 see like it's not like they are government supporters of course they're not religious supporters it's like mo- like i almost know no one almost like, like in 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 person no one but uh maybe on social media i could find a, a handful of people who maybe regime supporters who like talk about bitcoin or accept bitcoin or like bitcoin or talk about or anything consider it but it's like no one is a supporter in that regard if mm-hmm. you it's, it's like you support bitcoin you don't support these yeah it's it's like this that's pretty logical huh i mean <laughs> yeah so yeah Guys, do you have any final thoughts? I mean, I'm, I'm hoping you know. There's, um, I think the network effect is that there, there'll be there'll be a critical you know juncture, uh, which is going to happen. I think in the next few years, and I'm hoping and I'm and I'm and I'm very you know optimistic that this is going to like really uh, trigger something uh, within and beyond Iran. You know, it's not limited to Iran. Uh, I do have a, I do have a sure, go ahead. let's this, this way pessimistic point about this and i was really optimistic at the beginning of hyperinflation in venezuela that venezuela the the, the first country who would, who would like basically admit that bitcoin is a method of payment would be venezuela because there is a hyperinflation like basically every the stage is set it's just for bitcoin to come and take it maybe it was not Uh, the lightning and the fees were not as good as it should be for uh, for the for Bitcoin to become a method of payment in the country at that time, but still not a method of payment, uh, or you don't hear it as be becoming really prominent here. And then you you hear it from completely another place, El Salvador, to say let's accept Bitcoin as a method of payment. Which, in my point of view, even though it's cool, it's super cool. But I think decentralization cannot be applied top bottom. It should come bottom up. And what uh, when when we have the, the the situation in Venezuela, and I it's still there is a huge inflation. There pay, people are still basically effed up with everything. But uh, I just saw one video of one person accepting. Uh, Uh, Bitcoin as a method of payment to buy an uh, an ice cream or someone bought an ice cream, and I I was expecting this should be by now everywhere in the country, and now that I don't see that, I'm I just lost some hopes. Let's put it this way: that becoming a method of payment, uh, a rigorously daily use method of payment. It seems it was not is not going to meet my expectation, and that was my final thoughts. Yeah. Well, I think lightning and uh, I mean just just the the you know the strike app, which hopefully are also going to come to EU. I'm I'm having high hopes because this will you know help people um, make transactions without even without even thinking about Bitcoin. You know, it's, it will be super user friendly. Uh, I know it's you know there's this there's this concern about privacy with its you know to how you know how how much can it be surveilled or how how much KYC is it? But it doesn't matter. It's so it's so user friendly. Uh, what I've heard you know from other testimonials from other people who've experienced it uh, that it just people who even you know who not even thinking about Bitcoin can transact with their you know they just download any you know the app like any other app and you're just using it you know so uh and whether you 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 know the merchant wants to accept it in fiat or bitcoin it's up to you right so uh so i'm really looking forward to that and i think uh it's all about you know usability at the end of the day yeah well not i don't know about usability it's like People go to go to extreme measures to use some stuff if they if it's very vital, critical for them. It's the premium fee. It's mm-hmm. like the effort, or it's the money. Like you may pay like let's say fifteen or twenty or thirty percent more for Bitcoin. That's mm-hmm. what actually Vasco says. Like in such countries, in when we live, 
even if it's like 30 percent more it's it's okay if it helps you if it's logic for you to use it if it's vital for you so it's uh so at the end of the day i guess it depends on where you live on and yeah. what are your expectations and what you need from bitcoin if you live in iran you'd like you may need it for connecting to the world because you could pay in iran you don't have a problem paying online or anything when you live in iran but it's good it solve a problem of connecting to the world because right now we don't have it, any financial access to the world unless bitcoin except bitcoin like just bitcoin does that for us so that's one thing so if you want to buy something buy an account buy a service and subscription or anything and it could help you with that then you're gonna use it yeah so Necessity. even if it's yeah. difficult it's you, you're gonna use it if it's even if it's not very user friendly it won't be adopted by all but you may know someone then in your friends or family who knows how to do that mm -hmm. and even if you cannot do it he would do it for you yeah he or she so and uh with the store of value i see it again very similar to like uh two years ago they uh there was this price surge for usd in iran mm -hmm. and uh the the value of iranian real was like uh, <laughs> plummeting like so mm -hmm. fast and so hard that no one was ex uh, ex expecting it to like go down this much in a very short period of time they started uh uh, actually, uh, confis con not confiscating. Uh, they started with laws of confiscating USD from you, and uh, and also actually uh, closing down exchanges like USD exchanges who like sell USD cash notes, uh, like in the, in the, in the bazaar in the mm. market, like in the street. So they started closing down those, but. It, didn't interfere with it did interfere a bit but it did not stop people from getting usd and buying usd because it was like real going down people mm -hmm. were very uh they, they were very like willing to buy usd at that time so these actions won't stop them and people if they are in need like for storing their value if bitcoin is more usable and more liquid than USD, which could be, I don't know the stats, but it's maybe, um, because it's very easy right now to buy or sell Bitcoin in Iran, very easy. So if, if, it, if it could be used like that, then people are gonna find a way, they're gonna use it and no one, gonna stop, no one can stop them. They may make it difficult, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not the case here you need it so you're yeah. gonna do it anyway yeah you know there's gonna be a lot of other factors you know the the monetary debasement you know the fiat debasement the credit expansion the in trillions and trillions being printed or created out of thin air so this is all going to contribute i think to this whole you know positive process i would say so uh arman you haven't said much do you want to you have any final remarks or f final thoughts or uh, i i'd really rather to be a listener <laughs> rather than talking but uh yeah as you as you said i mean uh, the, the main point is that we we need it the people need it and it's really good to to realize it as especially i, I see it as a store of value because i think mm. uh a really harsh time is coming ahead all of us especially i mean it's all the shit show that's going on even here but in iran gonna be even worse so uh, yeah i just hope that uh, yeah, the platform is really great to see the, the lightning. I was actually showing it to my dad a couple of days ago. It was uh, really like I could see it in his eyes. Like <laughs> I sent him 100 sats with no fees. That's amazing. Like, yeah. 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 See, there, you don't need any. Exactly. But uh, yeah, it's really great. Like the stuff that Zia is doing. It's awesome. We appreciate yeah. it. 
And uh, yeah, I hope that the, the infrastructure will expand in a way that uh, basically people realize the, the DCA is the, the key point. Just uh, yeah, keep DCA and yeah. yeah. The, the, the lightning is, the, the, the new apps on lightning, are now, you, now, that, now that you just said about uh, sending sats, this, uh, I have no, never used this bot in Telegram, but the latest we installed it in our community group and people are just sending sats to each other mm -hmm. because of good comments like every day. It's super cool. This is like, yeah. I see with more con conventionalization, things are going to get better. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, Zia, thank you so much, uh, Mohammed, Arman. Um, Zia, you know, you're doing really God's work, indispensable, you know, important work. So keep it up. Where can people find you? I mean, do you have the, I don't know, the Persian channel or on YouTube or? Uh, yeah, on, on my, in my Twitter bio, there's all the links they need. Okay. So you could just search my name, Zia Saj on YouTube and uh, Farsi or English. It doesn't make a difference uh, on YouTube you could find me and there's uh, like my Twitter which is also the underline mm -hmm. set and uh, I have a website the and uh, there's uh, quite a few other places there's the uh, we have a podcast coming so you could watch out for that too cool. it's gonna be a good project we're mm -hmm. working Good awesome. to, like we're trying to do a very good project a bitcoin only podcast can yeah so that's that thing too that's called lonnie hargush which is rabbit hole in farsi <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, and, uh yeah. yeah thank <laughs> you so they could just search that too mm. it's very easy to find it on spotify mm. Castbox, and all the other platforms actually the the trailer episode is out but i haven't announced it yet yeah so can i announce it later yeah hope to you Twitter. know yeah i mean unfortunately my farce and, is uh, not that good yeah <laughs> I, these are all the places you could use find me on, on telegram too mm -hmm. i have a telegram channel i keep all of these updated at the same time Mohammed, thank you so much for your time um i hope you know we can do this more often uh what's your what's your twitter handle again and where, where can people find you Oh, okay. The Twitter handle is uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm That's just going to put in the show notes. I'm going to put in show notes. <laughs> uh, no, I mean any other okay. links uh, or my, yeah. my, my Twitter handle is Stamade Doyum, but uh, mm -hmm. that's a uh, that's a long one, and there is a long story behind it. And I do have a channel in Telegram that I write up on so about the. Uh, uh, Bitcoin in it, uh, it's called Zanjire underline FA. It is basically only in Persian. And then there is the community that we are always there with uh, Zia and everyone else, uh, Simorg, which is basically our lovely Persian community that's mostly talking about Bitcoin, but there is sometimes uh, shitcoinery in it as well. Yeah. <laughs> People got to learn. Yeah, they, they will learn the hard lesson. So, Arman, thank you so much for your input and sharing your thoughts. Any other final uh, thoughts? Uh, no, I would say, yeah, just go and follow you. Yeah. <laughs> Keep this saying. I think it was Friar Hash who came up with, with this. Uh, I mm -hmm. guess, like, we need only, like, 3 million people yeah. at the moment. If you do, like, 10 like, bucks a day, yeah. we can yeah. hold, in worst-case scenario, like, if all the... Uh, the miners are weak-handed. We can hold like the level of 35, 36k. If you're living in the West, in uh, developed countries, you can do way, way more than that at least. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, all the best. Yeah, actually, uh, Hesma Cook said if if we have like auto DCA people who who who, who accumulate like t like buy Bitcoin like ten dollars per day or something like that. It'll, yeah, you just need you just need two three million people constantly, you know, exactly. on auto DCA, and you could you know mm. reach reach uh, whatever a price of two or, or three million. I don't know what was the, 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 the his his estimate, but it was sort of a calculation he did. You know, like uh, <laughs> the exponential curvature, you know, of of mm -hmm. Bitcoin's mm -hmm. uh, purchasing power. 
So guys, thank you so much again, and hope we can, you know, repeat this as, you know, sometime in the near future. And maybe together with Alex Gladstein, that would be great. You know, I would, I would be really yeah. curious what, you know, what his, I don't know, from especially from a human rights perspective and his strategical perspective, what's what would be his, you know, his input? Like, how would we, how would he resolve? Because he wrote an, a, a beautiful article on Palestina, like how how Palestina would prosper and 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 blossom. Uh, with a Bitcoin standard, um, yeah, and you know all the all the I mean, everything is coming out right now. It's it's, it's it's extremely you know makes me extremely bullish and optimistic. You know about Nigeria, El Salvador, the hyperinflationary countries. It's I mean you know we can't really complain. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it is it is I, I it it worth mentioning. Now Bitcoin is worth around forty thousand dollars. And it's for everyone is like, yeah, okay, it's just forty thousand dollar. It should be more. And, and if everyone agreed, like this is a huge amount of money, like, and no one really cares. It's it's like it really worths this, worth this, and it's worth more. And people are getting to agree that Bitcoin worth a lot of money. The deflationary system that Satoshi put in place. It is working, and it's working nicely. It's amazing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guys, I really had a blast. Hope we can talk soon again, and have a great day. Take care. Stay healthy. Ta Thanks for Thanks. having us. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye. Sure. Take care. Sure. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.